Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, first, thanks to the NOG for having me. It's really great to be here. And uh, thank you to you all for your attention for the next few minutes. Um, so my name is Shannon Wyrick. I'm going to talk about this concept of small data that I've been thinking about. And hopefully it resonates with you. I'm going to start with a quick poll. Uh, who is currently processing flow or other visibility data from their infrastructure and creating dashboards, creating graphs, alerting on it? Anybody thinking about that? Of course. Excellent. And so uh, maybe a follow-up question is, uh, who's happy with their solution or who thinks that it could be done better? <laughs> well, that's what I'm going to get into because this is kind of a process that uh, I went through uh, at my time at my current company. Um, so I'm going to talk about this small data piece um, and I'm going to do it through the lens of the company I work at called NS1. And so NS1 is, among other things, a managed authoritative DNS provider. And so we serve DNS with a global Anycast network. We have 26 POPs around the world. Um, we're doing quite a bit of DNS traffic on the order of 100 billion DNS queries on an average day. If it's uh, a day with a lot of attacks, we might see a lot more than that. And we are collecting, uh, of course, flows from our infrastructure, from our switches, from our routers. We're also analyzing packets at the edge. Um, and it's a lot of data, right? So um, just on the flow side, it's uh, several terabytes of data that we store, and that's about 30 days of history. And so I think we've gone through different thinking over the years. Um, I've been with the company eight years now. And in the beginning, uh, when you ask yourself, what data should we be collecting? How do we, how do we visualize it? What are we going to collect? Um, what we thought at the time, and, and maybe some of you uh, have gone through this as well, is you think, well, what we want is we want to collect all the data, right? Let's collect all the data because we're not quite sure what questions we want to uh, ask of it, and it'll be there if we need it. Um, and so it's a sort of theoretical, we want it all just in case. And what we've learned over time is that what we really want are targeted insights, right? We want to extract uh, real information, real insights from the data, and that's what we care about, not so much all the raw data. And that's what's going to help us uh, operate and debug and scale and protect our networks today. And we've learned that there's this price to pay for, for streaming raw data to a, to a central solution. And so what we've seen is that it can... Uh, Sometimes you need processing uh, pipelines, right? Data pipelines. And these can be um, tough to set up or complicated or hard to scale. And then you have to take the raw data and do something with it. You have to, to make it actionable. You have, to, you have to extract the insights from it. And sometimes you wind up collecting a lot of data uh, that you can't actually take advantage of uh, or that is, is hard to make sense of. And with so much data, it can be uh, hard to retain a lot of it. Um, you might have slow dashboards. And if you're having problems, um, if there's some sort of event that you need to debug, uh, maybe, your, maybe your pipeline is slow, right? Especially uh, for us, in, in some sort of DDoS attack scenario, we need very quickly to understand what's going on. And so I want us to think about this uh, small data concept that I'll propose. And what I mean by that is we've got a lot of edge uh, data, right? Information going through our edge network. And I propose that we push the processing of that data out to the edge as close as possible to uh, the source of the events that we want to analyze. And if we do it this way, um, we, there are several advantages. So we can react quicker because we'll have these insights that we're extracting available directly at the edge and we can action locally. And we can also collect those in in a more lightweight way to uh, a central place so that we can get global visibility. And in general, since we're collecting, uh, since we're analyzing at the edge, we wind up working with less data. We're collecting less, we're processing less, we're storing less, and that can lead to longer retention times and, and things like faster dashboards. And uh, there's this saying in English, finding a needle in the haystack, right? Um, and another way that we put that is that there's a lot of noise out there, and what we're really interested in is the signal. And so we want to extract this signal from the noise. And so a part of this concept as well is that we need to be able to define that signal dynamically, right? There's no one definition of that signal. And so part of our system needs to be that we need to, to change our definition of a signal over time. Uh, so this is me. I've been in the industry for quite some time. Um, and the, the last couple of years, I've been focused on the ORB project that I'm going to talk about. So uh, just to give a, a quick summary, um, if there's one or two things that you take away, uh, please remember this. So it's that ORB um, is an open source edge observability product uh, or project. It is a tool that's been designed for distributed edge networks. And it does use this small data paradigm that I've started to talk about. And it 
combines that with this concept of dynamic policy uh, orchestration. And the idea is to extract insights from this data that's flowing out there at the edge and, uh, and, and collect that in so that um, we, can, we can action on it, we can make it usable. Uh, there's a goal to integrate with modern observability stacks. I'll talk about what that means a little bit. And all of this is free and open source and backed by NS1. Uh, so just to jump right into it, so what do I mean by sort of this insights and stuff? So this is a dashboard that was generated. Um, it's a Grafana dashboard, and it's using some of the information that the orb agent uh, is able to pull. And so what we can see is that it's not just graphs, but it's also information like uh, top lists. And so, uh, you know, so this is a type of deep streaming analysis, and we're able to ingest different types of data and apply uh, streaming algorithms to extract this, um, this signal that we're talking about, these insights. And so a lot of that winds up being things like tops, right? Top Ks in some way. So on the network layer, we're talking IPs and ASNs and Macs and pulling all that stuff out. Um, but we can also do things like cardinality, right? How many unique items in a set. Um, we can do rates, we can do counters, of course, we can do percentiles, and do this stuff in real time at the edge. And because of where the uh, project came from, we've done a lot of DNS, so there's a um, deep DNS extraction, uh, and we've now added flow support as well to be able to analyze that data in, a, in the similar way. So there's two main parts to ORB. Uh, there's the control plane side of it, and then there's the edge agent. So let me talk about the control plane side a little bit. So this is a, uh, it's a cloud native application. Um, you can install it yourself if you want. And it does provide uh, various bits of functionality. So um, the first one is that uh, it provides a REST API. So everything that you can do in the system, you can automate. Uh, we also have a portal that you can use and I'll show off in just a few moments. Uh, part of it is fleet management, right? Because it was designed to, um, to be used with a distributed edge, right? Across, uh, across a distributed topology. And so as the agents are out there, that's, that's the fleet. They need to connect in uh, to the system. And so there's a way to connect and to organize, provision, and manage all of these, um, these agents. And then the policy management is the dynamic piece. So we want to be able to tell these agents what to do in real time. And part of that is we need to be able to address different sets of agents, right? different groups. That might be something like geographically. Um, and we want to be able to send policies out and pull them down send many policies at once and so forth. And in general, have this configuration management functionality. And then the other side of that is collecting the data. So Orb does have a way to pull data back in for you. So we do collect um, the telemetry. You don't have to do that separately. And we will sync it for you. This idea of syncing is the ability to send to uh, like a time series database or, or some kind of database. So here's an architecture overview. Uh, it's a little busy, sorry about that. Uh, but if you look at the, the large cloud in the middle, that represents the orb control plane. And this can be self-hosted, as I mentioned. You can deploy it into uh, a Kubernetes. Um, it doesn't depend on any particular vendor. Uh, we also have a SaaS site that is running this software. It's at orb.live, um, which you could try anytime. And that gets you going uh, faster because the control plane um, does have uh, you know, requirements to run it in Kubernetes and so forth. So orb.live would let you try this whole system faster. Um, but if you look up at the top part of it, you can see the orb agents. And so um, this is based on a technology that I've talked about in the past too called PacketVisor. And it is the thing that is doing this edge streaming analysis. And again, it's meant to be deployed into hybrid architectures and ingest different types of data. And so, of course, um, we see it works with DNS in various ways. Um, that could be through packet capture. It could be through DNS tap. Uh, it's able to ingest the flow. It's able to be deployed into clouds and servers and so forth. And then they all connect into the orb control pane. And uh, we see here that we're able to send out policies to the agents and then collect back in metrics and logs um, according to the policies they're running. So the other part of this is that we then ingest that data and then ship it out somewhere else, right? That's what the syncs are. And so right now we have first class support for Prometheus uh, and we are moving to open telemetry, which is, um, which is an open system that's being built by many vendors. Uh, and that's gonna open up the, the ways that we can export data to, to various systems. And then the bottom we see that there's this REST API that you can automate against uh, as well as the, the portal UI. Just showing off real quick what this orb portal looks like. So the orb portal, by the way, does not include the dashboarding. That's separate. That's done, say, in a Grafana or some other observability tools based on the syncs that you've sent to. The orb UI and, and control plane itself focuses, 
focuses on the, the fleet management and these other things. And so this is what the fleet management looks like. Um, this is where you can provision the agents that you're putting in. Uh, they connect into the system. You can see their status. You can organize them with tags. And these are the recipes, these policies, for deciding what type of information that we want to collect and analyze at that edge. So these policies decide how to do that, and then we can send them out to groups of agents that we care about. You can decide which sinks that you'd like to send the data to. You can collect the data and send it to multiple places, or you could send it to one place. And then I mentioned this configuration management aspect is how we decide which groups we're sending the policies to and where that data should go. And again, here's that, that sort of same dashboard. After you've gotten the data into your database, that's where you have your Grafana or, or other tools that are going to uh, create your dashboards and graphs and, and show it to you visually, or do your alerting, for example. Okay, so let me switch to the other side of it. So there's that edge agent side. This is our orb edge agent um, that gets deployed as close as possible to uh, the events that are happening that you want to analyze. So the idea with the agent is that it's meant to tap into multiple concurrent data streams at the edge. And it's using these streaming algorithms to analyze deeply in real time and extract these insights, extract that signal from the noise, and efficiently summarize what we care about, the things that we care about in real time, and then generate those lightweight metrics to, to ship back. And again, this, this, this um, idea that we can dynamically program the entire fleet in real time is very important. And the Orb Edge agent was meant to both scale up and scale down. Um, so it's meant to be uh, efficient. It can run, for example, on, um, on a Raspberry Pi. I'd, I'd love to know if, if it could run the Taurus, actually. Uh, but it's also meant to scale up, so it can horizontally scale, um, and it's meant to be able to, uh, to work with multiple CPUs, for example. So what types of information can it ingest? So um, the original Packet Advisor was built on packet capture technology, and so um, that's actually been in production for many years. Uh, but we've added various ways to ingest different types of data as well, and this is a modular system, and so in the future we'll be adding even more ways to, to ingest data. Uh, but as I mentioned, it does work with um, DNS tap, uh, various types of flow data, and then we've identified other types of interesting um, data streams that uh, we'll be ingesting. And then on the other hand, we need to analyze, right? We need to have different ways to inspect that and uh, allow people to create policies to extract the information they're looking for. And so currently that's focused on L2 and L3 networking information. Um, of course, there's deep DNS support. We've added DHCP and various ways to examine the flows. And now this gets into a diagram of how that stream processing works at the edge agent. And so this is that Packet Advisor technology and the way that it sees policies and how to tap into the data streams that are out there. And so what's illustrated here is that there are two concurrent inputs happening at once here. One is that it's watching packets go across these, this ETH0 interface. So that's one tap and that's a packet capture tap. And then there's another tap that's uh, also opened up a port on, on this address, and it's ingesting flow data. And so we've got three policies that have been sent into this agent. And the first two are concerned with this packet capture uh, tap. And um, those policies have added a filter, right? It's important that the policies can slice and dice the data that's happening in real time in different ways. And in particular, this is looking at port 53 traffic because we're interested in DNS. And so the first policy has specified that we are interested in DNS traffic, but only DNS traffic that has a return code of NX domain. Uh, so when it finds that, it's going to track the metrics for that uh, along various dimensions, as well as track the L2 and L3 metrics for, for, those, for that traffic that it sees. And then that's a certain time series, and it'll ship that out. At the same time, there's another policy running which is also watching DNS, but it's looking at a different slice of data. It's looking for anything that ends with a query name of .foo.com, and it's gonna store all DNS metrics uh, separately for that. So those are different time series. And then finally, a, fi a third policy, which is looking at the flow data. Um, again, you can have a filter there, which is, which is optional, or there's different ways to combine different filters. There's a flow analyzer, and there's a, a different series of, uh, of metrics coming out for that. And so the orb agent's job is to send the policy here, have it set up these taps, and then also collect back all of the metrics that are coming out of the orb agent. So just uh, you know, quickly to show what the, what the stream processing looks like from this, from this packet advisor process that is running. 
And so what we see here is raw DNS traffic um, coming into the process. Of course, there's loads of interesting information we care about that are, that are on the wire here. And the goal is to pull out that information and, again, create these insights. And, and for DNS in particular, and what things that we've learned as, as DNS operators over the time, there are things that you might expect, really. Top queries. Obviously, we care about top query types, top result codes. Um, what are the percentiles of the various traffic rates that we're seeing? What are the sources of the traffic and so on? And so we can uh, combine different policies together to get different views of this data that's coming in. But what we see here is what's coming out of the Pack Advisor is always a steady sort of heartbeat of information, right? Because when there's, uh, when there's very little traffic coming into the system, we're putting out the same types of summary, right? The magnitudes will be, will be smaller, but the metrics coming out of the system are the same. And on the other hand, if we're under attack, if we're seeing a lot of traffic, uh, also we will only be putting out the same amount of metrics, right? Now the magnitudes of the information contained within are higher, but the size of the output of the telemetry itself uh, stays small, right? And so even under a lot of traffic pressure, we don't put pressure on downstream systems in terms of, in terms of collection. So just a few tech notes. So it has been um, built to run mostly on Linux. Uh, I mentioned um, it, it does run on ARM because we've got it working on like a, a Raspberry Pi, but it's, it's mostly been targeted at x86-64. Um, we do use Docker a lot at NS1, um, so that's the main way that uh, we deployed, but uh, you can also use the statically linked binaries which are available. I just want to mention that the way the system was built is essentially to use IoT technology. Um, and so the way that the agents connect into the control plane is with MQTT over TLS. And that's also the way that the, the metrics are collected back uh, and processed. Um, the control plane itself, uh, I think, as I mentioned, is um, deployable into Kubernetes. So it's this microservices architecture that, again, you could self-host if you want, or you could use our orb.live SaaS site. Um, there's also a Docker Compose available if that's something you use. If you do want to use Kubernetes, a help chart is available. And uh, the actual metrics themselves that are getting pulled into the system right now, we've focused on Prometheus um, since it's a very popular way to, to, uh, to store metrics and to uh, alert on them and, and dashboard and so forth. Um, but we want to expand that a lot and we want to be able to plug into different uh, observability stacks that folks are using. And so we are um, transitioning to open telemetry uh, to help us with that. So this is an open source project, and we would love to see um, we would love to see contributions. We'd love to understand use cases from all of you folks, uh, and understand um, what kind of data you have, what kind of needs you have around processing that data. Uh, and then we've got several ideas for the project's future on how to improve it and how to use this data, how to action on it mostly. Um, so there's the option for new stream analyzers, new stream sources, um, machine learning. Of course, would be very interesting, especially anomaly detection on the metrics that we're pulling in. And even this idea that um, using that type of anomaly, election, uh, anomaly detection to create policies in real time, right? Because in the end, the dynamic policy piece is interesting, but we wouldn't want to do that manually. I ideally, we can have some automation there where when uh, anomalies are detected, for example, um, a, a policy could be fired up in real time to get deeper information on it. And there's a whole host of other ideas that we've had, but again, what we're interested in is, is understanding what the community uh, needs might be and uh, building our roadmap on that. So let me just uh, sum it up again. Um, so Orb is an observability tool that is focused on distributed edge networks. It uses this small data paradigm, um, and we're pairing that with dynamic policy orchestration. The idea is collecting insights from this distributed edge and plugging it into modern observability stacks. And again, this is all free and open source software. Here are some links if you're interested in looking at this further. Uh, Gitorb.io is the main community site. Um, Orb.live is the SaaS site if you'd like to try it. Uh, all of this is hosted on GitHub and we develop on GitHub, so issues and so forth are on there. And we'd love your feedback. Um, my email is at the bottom here and I'll be at the conference, of course, and I'd love to talk to anyone who's interested. And I'll take questions if we have time. Cool, thank you very much. Uh, we have time for one or two, two questions. So. Yeah, there is one. Thank Do you, you support IPv6? And I was, we 100% support IPv6. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay, thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much, Ruby.